Hello and welcome to our show, Film Talk with AJ Dean. I'm AJ Dean, your host, and I have my award-winning, and I'm so proud of and honored to be with my co-host, Paul Vato, with me. Hey, Paul, how's it going there in Las Vegas? Wonderful. It is great, and it's so good to be here. I'm so excited for tonight's show. I, I can't wait to, to get going. So thank you for always making me a part of it, AJ. Oh, Paul, you are the reason that we win the awards, Paul. I couldn't do it without you. And I want to say thank you so much. You, you're right. We have a spectacular, we have two gorgeous ladies on our show tonight. I'm so thrilled and so excited. We have Sue Phillips, who's the founder. Hello. Yes. Hey, Sue. Um, she's the founder of Centerprises Incorporated. It's a, and she's a globally recognized expert in fragrance and a perfume designer. She's won numerous awards around the world. She's worked with Jamie Foxx, Katie Holmes, Lisa Vanderpump, Zandaya, Susan Sarandon, and Lawrence Fishman, just Fishbourne, just to name a few. And she is amazing. Hello, Sue. How are you? I'm great. How are you, AJ? How lovely to be here. And hi to Paul and to Christiane. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So excited. And along with you, Sue, we're so happy to introduce Christiane. Now, she's a mermaid. She represents the Key West um, Mermaid <laughs> F uh, Festival. Isn't that right? And yeah. um, Christy, yeah, Christiane, you're also a radio personality and broadcaster. You've got your own show. It's called Triple Aqua with Mermaid Christy Ann. And that's in Florida. Is that right? Hello, Christy Ann. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be here. Uh, I'm honored to be with you, AJ and Paul and, and Sue. You all are amazing. I have uh, been following you or just researching really because I'm, I'm a little bit of a cosmic, uh, a little nerd of a mermaid and I, I like to do some research and I'm excited to be here. Yes, I'm the founder of the Key West Mermaid Festival and I am also a mermaid radio personality here in town and I do lots of things under the mermaid umbrella, like I like to say. Thank you for having me. Oh, amazing, amazing. And Sue, let's talk, let's go to Sue and talk to her about perfume. Let's hear and find out all things perfume, okay, Christiane and Paul? So, so Sue, what is perfume? So perfume, actually, there is a real meaning behind the word perfume. The word perfume comes from Latin, and it is the Latin for perfumum, which means through smoke. And in the ancient Egyptian rituals, they would actually offer gods and sac sacrifices in these religious ceremonies. And they would put on an altar of wood, all the elements that they wanted to offer to the gods. And then they would light the, the wood and all these beautiful, gorgeous uh, aromas from natural ingredients would be wafting through the air. So through the smoke wafted the gorgeous aromas. So through, through smoke came the word her fumum. And the ancient Egyptian rituals went throughout the land and throughout the centuries. And from the ancient Egyptian rituals to the 13th century, actually, they used an, an ingredient called galbanum, and they would put it in a thurible that would they would use in incense. And it's used today in the Catholic Church when you wave the incense holder backwards and forwards. And that was used to ward off evil spirits. So perfume has been used in religious ceremonies for centuries. And today we use it for the home to make your home smell wonderful in hotels, spas, and casinos on a more commercial level. And of course, for us to make us smell wonderful. I love that. That is beautiful. You know, I didn't know that, that it came from ancient Egypt and yes. all of those wonderful um, uh, rituals that have been passed down to us and in the church and all of that. This is fascinating. Yes. Um, don't you? And, and modern day perfumery oh. actually started in Grasse, G R A S S E, in France. And that was interesting just because, you know, the farmers would have all these cattle 
that was roaming around in grass. Southern France has the most beautiful light and the most beautiful fertile grounds. And so because of the fertile land and the grounds and the light, um, a lot of cattle was roaming around. So they had to do something with the animal hides. So when the animal hides were needed to be, um, uh, you know, um, uh, harvested, they would take the animal hides and they would soften it. So the leather was very harsh. They would soften the leather hides with chemicals to make it supple and soft and wonderful. But the, the chemicals gave it a harsh odor. But in grass, because of the beautiful land and the sunshine and all these natural elements, there were beautiful flowers and roses and petals that were growing all the beautiful natural ingredients. And so they took the petals, they harvested the petals early morning around four or five o'clock in the morning at the time when the dew was still very robust. And they would take the petals and they would put it on an altar of wax, on a bed of wax. And the oils from the petals would seep into the wax. And then they would separate the wax from the oils. And then they would take the oils and they would mix it with the chemicals. And that's how they made scented leather. And they gave to Catherine de' Medici in the 17th century scented leather gloves. And that's where the expression walking hand in glove comes from. Mm. So there's so many wonderful stories and rituals and, and treasures of you know, history about fragrance and people don't really know about fragrance until um, sadly uh, COVID has accelerated the awareness of our sense of smell and um, I have actually helped a lot of people with COVID who've had anosmia regain their sense of smell and so um, it's become a very interesting aspect that fragrance now is becoming so important because the most powerful sense that we have is our sense of smell and taste. Mm. It's linked. And when people lose their sense of smell, it's devastating. So, I, um, well, that is amazing. And I want to yeah. thank you for helping the people during COVID. Um, the sense of smell is so important. And I wanted to go over to Christy Ann and talk about the ocean. And oh. the ocean has its own perfume, doesn't it, yes. in a way, with salt? It Sea salt. You no, know, you know it does, but I, I've got to say I, I have to. I'm I'm so fascinated with what Sue is saying because scents are, you know, they're attached to our olfactory, which is also, you know, our memory and our memory banks, and and you know that has to say something because history is um so profound, and we tend to live want to live for the future or don't realize that the present is a gift and. But, but the past and the history is important and it attached to our memory and, and all of the ancient traditions, just like you were saying, it's fascinating because it is important and to have that, that, that one of our senses, which is our, our, our sense of smell and how it's attached to, to our memory banks. I, I just, I find that so fascinating and I love what you were saying. Me too. Thank you. Um, yeah, as you a know, mermaid... <laughs> I'm just astounded with all the, the human part of it, but yes. <laughs> well, you know, you're right, Christian, because uh, actually studies have been done where they talk about our strongest sense is our sense of sight, but our most powerful sense is our sense of smell because it is linked from the olfactory bulb to the limbic system. So scent and memory are so important. And also our sense of smell is related to our sense of taste. So without your sense of smell, you can't taste. And that is also one of the reasons that COVID has been so devastating for people who have become victims of anosmia, which is complete loss of smell. Wow. Now, I, I have to ask, and um, just because I'm so curious about it, what is it that you feel is attached to um, a spiritual aspect of when it comes to fragrance and scents and memory. What, what is your take on that? Well, just the very fact that fragrance has been used in religious ceremonies for centuries. Um, so much so that, you know, the, you know, in the ancient Egyptian, in their burial ceremonies, they would actually bury the pharaohs with their ampules of fragrance because they wanted them to be fragrant in the afterlife. And so between the afterlife and then in your actual life, 
just as I said before, to, you know, in the 13th century, they used galbanum to ward off the evil spirits. So, you know, between the, the spiritual life, the religious life, and just the secular life, fragrance has become very important. And, you know, the other thing is so interesting is that through the decades, there have been various fragrance um, ingredients and, and perfumes that really represent the decade. I do a talk, uh, which I call Fragrance Through the Decades, the social, political, and economic trends that influence fragrance. And based on somebody's preference, I can tell what era they're talking about. If they say they love Chanel Number no. 5 or Georgia Beverly Hills or Angel or uh, Issey Miyake or Tom Ford, I mean, there are those fragrances that absolutely represent a certain period in time. And that's why also fragrance is so tied into memory. That's wow, incredible. it's astonishing. Isn't it? That's, Beautiful. In a few moments, I'm going to ask you about uh, King Charles III. Uh, he's going to have his coronation coming up next year, I believe. And there's a secret anointing oil. We're going to talk about that in a second, but I want to go over to Christiane and ask Christiane, isn't this fascinating? And what's new with you? So fascinating. We, we mentioned COVID. What is, what's new with you? You have your own radio station. How can, how can people tune in? Let's, let's. Well, I, I, I wish I had my own radio station or maybe not, you know, maybe that's not a good thing, but I do have my own radio show and it's called Triple Aqua. And I am listened to worldwide. I have listeners in Germany, in New York and uh, Ohio, all over the place, even in Cuba. I have listeners wow. in Cuba and um, I'm, bi I'm bilingual. So every now and then, you know, I'll, I'll uh, give them a little shout out to my listeners in Cuba, which is really cool. And no one ever thinks that of me. They always think I'm like Polynesian or something else. And uh, interesting enough, and I'll circle back around, but uh, my ancient ancestry goes all the way up to the top of the Nile River with the Kings of Kush. Um, are so it's fascinating what you were saying Sue and uh, of course no surprise that we're all here because you know the universe works in mysterious ways and you know that's usually how it works uh, our creator has a sense of humor um, but yeah it's uh, it's fascinating um, I'm a 46 soon to be 47 year old mermaid in human years I tell the kids in in and um, at mermaid years I'm 24 six years old, but in human years, I'm 46. And um, I have made a career about uh, of being a professional mermaid. And I'm the founder of the Mermaid Festival. I work with different resorts. I do live broadcasting for people. Um, this year, I was on a commercial on Wheel of Fortune on national TV. <laughs> and, uh, my father called me, he's like, you're on TV, you're on Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> and, uh, and so many other people, I was like, my mom says she just saw you. And so it was kind of fun. And so I do modeling and I do, uh, I'm in documentaries, I do documentary voiceovers. So being a, a mermaid in the human world is really interesting because it's very eclectic. And I like that. And um, because I'm a triple Aquarius, hence the name of my show is called Triple Aqua, um, which is extremely rare, sun, moon and rising. I haven't met anyone yet. If you're a triple Aquarius, sun, moon and rising, I want to know, please email AJ and please email Paul and let let, let them know. Um, but yeah, in a uh, in a coconut shell, that's kind of what I do. Thank you. That's amazing. You're an amazing mermaid. You're our favorite mermaid. Oh, thank you. I'm probably and, the only mermaid you know. No. <laughs> yes, really, you really are. And 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 I'd say you're the very best. Isn't that right, Paul? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I'm trying to. You know, I know so many people, <laughs> thousands of people, and I'm trying to trying to remember if I've met another mermaid, and I feel like I have, but I can't remember who. So you are the only mermaid <laughs> in my life. So gracias I'll for being it. here. Ah, oh, de nada. <laughs> are are you, are you Latina or how do you know Spanish? Well, I I washed up on the shores of Key West in 1976 by default. My father was born here, so I just happened to, you know, be uh, washed up here by default, like I just said. And but my family is actually from Cuba, but my ancestry goes from Cuba to the Azores to all the way up to the top tip of the Nile River, which is very interesting. But if you if you Makes sense of it all. We are always by waterways where they import, export, who knows, mm. perfume, 
um, unfortunately, probably people um, or food or fabric or whatever the case may be. But we were always on the Atlantic side, which was very interesting to me. So I suppose I was always meant to be a mermaid. <laughs> I want to see what's your tail like. <laughs> oh, I, well, I have different tails because, you know, we're magic and we can transform all the time. So I probably have about a dozen tails. And they range from hobbyist tales. I um, I'm not a really um, I'm not really picky about tales. I feel like it's just more for fun. Um, at the end of the day, um, if I'm being serious with myself and everyone else on here, I cannot breathe underwater, although I can hold my breath for a very long time. So it is for fun, and um, I encourage everyone. You know, at the very beginning, people would tell me you know, you need a fancier tail, you need to up your game, whether it was a photographer or videographer or people that um, maybe even felt like uh, there was a, um, I had to be in a certain class. And to me, it was more fun and I didn't care. So the first time I was ever in a publication, I was in a coastal living and magazine and I was in a little fin fun tail and it was a little fabric tail and it seems like every time I'm on the cover of a magazine or a newspaper article I'm in a fabric tail but that's what it should be it should be fun and, and just not taking yourself seriously um, I'm excited that um, just recently Fox News on this summer in June did an article about how the popularity has grown within hobbyists and professionals all over the world globally. And um, I always like to say it's a mermaid movement is what's going on. But I want to, anyone that's out there and is thinking about doing this for a living, for fun, for a hobby, go for it. Don't worry about what your tail looks like. It can be a $50 tail all the way up to $60,000 because, you know, <laughs> they make them like that, you know, the, the silicone ones. But have fun, be yourself. I like to say, pick your Mersana and just swim with it. And don't worry about what everybody else is doing. It's just for fun and uh, just keep your vibration high. That's really what it's about. And you can make a living out of it and just keep swimming towards your dreams. I love that. And that's why I brought you two wonderful ladies together tonight because you both have beautiful hearts and you're both positive. And I wanted to bring you two together. I just think you're, it's fascinating. We have the Thank mermaid you. entertainment world and then we have the entertainment um, a perfume. Centertainment. Centertainment. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. And, and so cool. Sue, you've got a great picture behind you. Is that, are those your, um, are those your scents that you've created? Yes, this is my perfume boutique, which I have just moved into. Um, it was, it's on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, Madison Avenue, and it's just been open for about a month. It was actually a dentist office and it had a waiting room and two offices and of course I I turned it into a beautiful oasis uh, which is what I love to do with things and so this is the table this table actually you talk of royalty this table I bought about 10 years ago and it was actually a beautiful table that was created and built by Viscount Linley who is Princess Margaret's son and it was based on a 17th century tilt top table. So it can actually tilt up and down. And if I move it and if I want to open up the room, I can just lift it up and uh, it's beautiful and it's mahogany. And over the years I had put so many fragrances on it that the table got really ruined. And so just before I opened my perfume boutique, I had a restorer come in and he totally restored the and look at the, the wood, the, the grain of the wood. It's just so beautiful. It's and then I have a nice glass top over it. And these are the 18 perfumes that I have created. There are 18 Ooh. perfume blends. And each one is a beautiful perfume on its own. But the sort of the beauty and the magic of what we do is um, people take a scent personality quiz to start with to determine what fragrance family they like whether they like fresh or floral or woodsy or spicy and then I take them on this fragrance journey where they evaluate all the 18 blends and what's so interesting is how the quiz results absolutely reaffirm the type of fragrance that they like so if somebody is an outdoor sporty kind of person guess what type of fragrance they'll like. They'll like something citrusy and refreshing and sporty and a little ozonic, which is 
you know, a, a sea breeze kind of fragrance from the ocean. If they're a little bit more sophisticated, they might like a beautiful floral with a gardenia and a beautiful sensual woodsy note and perhaps a musky note. And then if they're men, um, a lot of men, American men, they, they kind of don't really want to admit that they like florals, but a lot of men do mm -hmm. like florals. And so the floral fragrances um, are usually enjoyed by men and women. And then of course the spicy and woodsy fragrances are enjoyed by people who, who might like a little sensuality and a little bit of uh, uh, overt, um, um, you know, sexiness, if you will. So it's, it's really fascinating. And what they do is they select the blends that they love and then they combine them. And when they put them together, it com comes up with a beautiful, very unique fragrance. And so that's what we offer, unique custom fragrance experiences. Wonderful. And um, they can find you on Facebook and Instagram. Is that right? Yes, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Sue Phillips, Centerprises. Uh, on Instagram, I actually have four <laughs> Instagram because when I first started on Instagram, my friends would say, oh, here comes Scentfully Sue. So I thought that was a great name and I Scentfully Sue. And then of course my company is Centerprises. So I had to take Centerprises. And then when I was downtown in Tribeca, my perfume boutique, I called the Centarium. Wow. And then one day somebody said to me, no, Sue, you're the brand. It has to be Sue Phillips. Yes. But by then, Sue Phillips was taken. Somebody else had Sue. So I now am the real Sue Phillips. So I have Scentfully Sue, Centerprises, uh, Sue Phillips Fragrance, which is, used to be the Centarium and the real Sue Phillips. But if you Google Sue Phillips Fragrance, I promise you I'll come up. <laughs> wow. What is, the, if I may, what is the name of your actual boutique? And maybe, maybe an address? I, and I, you've probably already given enough information, but I'm not in New York, but I'm sure New Yorkers are like, yeah, I already know exactly where she's at. But if you would mind sharing uh, the, the name of the actual physical location. Sure. Well, you know, I changed the name because when I was downtown in Tribeca, I was there, I had my perfume boutique, which I called the Centarium. Uh, and that was 12 years ago and everything was going beautifully. And that was where I met Jamie Foxx and Katie Holmes and Zendaya. And then the pandemic came along and everything closed downtown. Um, pretty much everything was just, you know, so empty and, and barren. And so when I decided to come and, and, and find something else, um, I went to a couple of pop-up places because I hadn't found something. And then in June, I was able to find this new boutique and I've rebranded everything. It's now Sue Phillips Fragrance Boutique or Sue Phillips Salon. And I'm on the Upper East Side of Manhattan at 19 East Avia Street, and it's a beautiful location. I'm very excited because it's time for people to come out again and to really enjoy fragrance and to realize that they can wear a fragrance that really reflects who they are, that they can make, be made to be felt you know, confident and exhilarated and sexy or sensual or you know, whatever mood you really feel you want to project, you can do it through fragrance because fra fragrance is so powerful. And in fact, I wrote my book called The Power of Perfume. I don't know if you can see it, um, but there it is, The Power of Perfume. And what I love, I just met somebody, uh, I, I did an expo on Saturday and I had my fragrance, my fragrance blend with me. And a woman said to me, what are you wearing? You smell amazing. So I had a little bit, and I sort of vialed it out for her. And she texted me tonight. She said, I've had so many compliments, I have to get a larger size. So when you get a compliment about the fragrance you're wearing, it is so, so powerful. It's, it's just wonderful um, because it means that whatever you're wearing really reflects who you are, as opposed mm -hmm. to wearing a designer fragrance or a celebrity fragrance that everybody else wears. So I always say, why wear what everybody else wears when you can create and wear your own? Um, that, that's amazing. I would love to have my own scent. Uh, do you wholesale? Of course, my mind always goes into that kind of business. Like, what if I want to create my own scent? Or are you just kind of selling to individual people and then you have, I would imagine you have notes. So when they reorder, it's, it's simple. Yes. 
And then the, I, if you don't mind sharing, you know, price wise, what's what this experience might, uh, what, might, what you might have to invest in this experience. And then also, can you do it online? Is there any way yes. for us to do that? Absolutely. So first of all, you can thank you for the question, Paul. And I love where you're going with that. You're a real businessman, I can tell. A hundred percent. I love it. So uh, certainly people can take the, the quiz online. You can go to my, my website, suephillips.com. I also have centerprises.com. So my, my company name is Centerprises and my new fragrance brand is Sue Phillips. So suephillips.com or centerprises.com. You can take the scent quiz and then you can really see the type of fragrance family. And in fact, when we, when we do the scent quiz, um, we have different size atomizers and you can actually select the one that you like. So, and they twist mm -hmm. and swivel. So this is, um, they are refillable. They twist and they swivel, swivel, which is fun. And they come in the black, the gold or the silver. And then I have larger sizes. And I really love believing in refillable, recyclable products. And mm -hmm. so it's nothing that you have to have um, cartons and you can throw everything away because it's excess material. I have beautiful sachets that are can be reused. So to take the scent quiz online actually is is quite easy. It's uh, you take the scent quiz online. It is um, I think it's one hundred and ninety five dollars for your own custom fragrance, and it arrives in the mail. And um, I think we're doing free shipping on first orders. So imagine getting taking the scent quiz and then getting a beautiful fragrance in the mail. What a lovely gift. You, we also do gift certificates. So if you wanted to gift somebody a certificate for a birthday or an anniversary or whatever kind of uh, celebration, you can actually create a gift certificate, get it online, and then we get the, the information, we send it out. And then of course, there's meeting with me in person um, at my boutique. Uh, the other thing is just to go back to the online thing uh, for many people who've lost their sense of smell I've actually created a scent kit and people can buy the scent kit to really help them restore their sense of smell I've helped about oh. 150 people in the last year and a half regain their sense of smell wow this is amazing. And I was going to say over to Christiane, um, wow, Chris, what do you think nice. of this and what kind of fragrances cool. do you like? Well, you know, I've got to say, because this is such an interesting topic and my hat's off to you, AJ, because you are such a uniter and the fact that you paired uh, me with Sue to be on yours and Paul's show is amazing. You know, when she said, I have 18 cents, that's my favorite number, 18. You know, it breaks down to numerology in a nine and nine is the completion of a cycle. And then Sue was saying how, you know, she did this and she was that and she was this. And, you know, I like to tell people, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up, but for right now, I'm a mermaid, right? Because, you know, we can change <laughs> our mind a lot. And it's very fascinating because I feel that Sue not only is an alchemist because she is an alchemist and, um, but she's also um, an energy reader. And she is very good at reading energy. And this quiz, I feel that it is something that it doesn't lie because energy doesn't do two things. It doesn't dissipate and it doesn't lie. So you're putting that intention out there and, uh, and then you're getting that back. So not only is she an alchemist of these beautiful scents, but she's pairing everybody up with their perfect, unique imprint of a scent. And I have to say, Paul, I feel that you would be coconut musk. For sure. <laughs> uh, I, 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 wow, that's funny. Yeah, that's funny you would say that because, and of course, maybe it's just so stereotypical, but like coconut, it's like vacation, like kind of look look at my backdrop. Granted, you know, AJ exactly. uh, created this for me, but, uh, you know, does it, fit? I, it, it totally does, of course, because it instantly transports me to Mexico or, or Cuba or anywhere, you know, any tropical place where anytime I smell coconut, uh, whether even even if it's if it's uh, a daiquiri or something or something made with <laughs> coconut and you're like oh my god I feel like I'm on vacation and that's totally my personality so 
this I, I wish uh, I wish we could do something like this out here in Vegas, you know, but uh, maybe well, we'll have to bring... we can't, you know, I'm coming to Vegas. I think I'm coming to Vegas sometime in December um, for a, for a, 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 a conference and, and a possible event. So I'll let you know. And if I do come, I would love to do perhaps we can do something, put an event together. I would, I would love to do that. We could do an event or I'd love to, you know, even do an interview, but in person and, and show people the power of this. And, and, uh, you know, I think, and price wise, I mean, I would imagine, and, and forgive me, you know, and I hope I'm not misspeaking here, but I, I know that at any time that my ex-wife was buying perfumes, they're not cheap. I mean, we're talking 150 bucks, 200 bucks, you know, more, maybe, probably, I don't know, but but uh, so it's just it's uh, but to have something handcrafted for yourself, I mean, a deal at twice the price, I think. Well, so I will just be, uh, you know, true confession um, to meet with me in person. Uh, it is a lot more, but at the same time, it's still a lot less than a typical bespoke perfume would cost. So what does bespoke mean? Bespoke really means made to measure, made for oneself. It, it bespeaks of the person. And it's actually a British term that was used for tailoring, British tailoring. So men's suitings were, were made custom for them, for royalty, for nobility, for the very, very wealthy. And so these people would go to the tailor and they would make these beautiful suits with gorgeous fabrics. So everything was handmade and, and of the utmost perfect quality. And so bespoke perfumery also happened to be a part of this whole trend for very wealthy nobility and royalty. And it was very much, as I said, part of a British trend. And that is, what we, and we'll get to the anointing oil in a minute, but the idea of a custom fragrance you really had to go to a perfumer. Usually a chief perfumer was assigned to a home of nobility or royalty. And the chief perfumer would go to the harvest, to the oceans or the cities or the forests or, and find interesting ingredients. And then would come back to the lab and start to concoct and to try and figure out what the oils and what the formulas were. And that would take anywhere from a year to two years to really perfect the ingredients. And it would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars or pounds or whatever. Well, you know, lo and behold, thanks to technology and a lot of interesting technology to try and get the fragrances and the ingredients to a, a, a more sort of commercial, if you will, um, space so that instead of us going to the, the, uh, the rose fields, the perfumers have already gotten the roses and then what we do is we use the different oils from the rose or the bulgarian rose or different aspects and it comes into a lab and we we actually filter it and filtrate it and so i can go to a lab and i can say show me the different roses and i don't have to go to the field so i there are certain labs that have beautiful fragrance oils which you can purchase and so you do that so the bespoke aspect of my business when people meet with me I actually take them on a fragrance journey so my 18 blends these really span the entire olfactor palette and so to meet with me and to take it on to take on a fragrance journey takes about an hour and a half to two hours I go in depth I speak to you about the different ingredients and formulas and so on and then you select your own. So that's at almost $900. And it comes with a beautiful two ounce bottle of perfume. I think it's worth it because I don't think they realize they're really getting a past life regression here. Exactly. It's really <laughs> cool. And, and Christiane, what is your uh, wow. favorite, what is your favorite perfume of fragrances? Is it citrus or? You what? know, I love citrus. I love sweet. And I also love florals. I'm, it's, it's not, I'm not really stuck on one thing. Um, I'm a little, it's a little all over the map, but um, I'm sure like, um, actually Sue, because you're so good with energy. What do you think? Because she, she can read energy like nobody's business. And that's why yeah. she's so good at what she does. Yeah. 
it's so interesting you say that because you know and i invite you all to take the quiz and i'm sure that my whatever i tell you it, it will come that way so because you're so outdoors christy and you love the ocean and you're a mermaid i would definitely say you love something in the fresh category and I have a beautiful ozonic fragrance, which really is sort of the sea breeze in captured in a bottle. It's beautiful. But because you've got this mermaid, this beautiful mermaid feminine thing going, you definitely would love florals. So I think you would love some fresh citrusy ozonic marine notes with a beautiful floral. And I also think a little hint of some spicy notes. Oh, yeah, I, th I think I think you're a little a little <laughs> sensible there. You're a little spicy. <laughs> I'm spicy. I have uh, eight placements in Aries, so I'm very spicy. <laughs> Interesting. And AJ, I think for you, um, I think I think you might also like something a little fresh, but. Um, I think you're sort of a little bit more in the outdoor natural country air. And I think a beautiful sensual sandalwood mm. combined with a beautiful fresh green um, a, a fragrance with green leaves, green grass, green teas, and a hint of hyacinth would just be, because to me, you look so fresh and so beautiful out there. And I can see you sort of walking in the highlands, but I can also see you're very beautiful and very attractive. So you've got this feminine thing going, but I think, I don't think you're a very floral person. I think you're more into the sort of fresh, natural, but very beautiful green um, and woodsy and um, Earthy. You're absolutely Earthy. right. Yeah, I love, love, That's I love lavender. You're right. I love lavender. I love cypress. I love sage. Yeah. I love these kinds of very natural. Um, yeah, I, I love I love rose, though. I know rose is one of the highest frequencies, I think. Is that right, Sue? You know, rose, absolutely. But I have to sit, tell you that it saddens me when people say to me, oh, it smells like an old lady and, you know, rose is so old fashioned. And yeah. when I hear that, I get a little bit upset, but I understand why. So rose is the most beautiful, beautiful ingredient. It's floral. It's got some um, very, uh, it, 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 it just blossoms, it blooms. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in the, apparently in the thirties and forties, um, mm -hmm. companies that had made face powder put the ingredient of rose in the face powder. So mm -hmm. women would put the face powder on and of course there would be a rose ingredient. So when you kissed your mother or your grandmother, you immediately had that association with rose and powder and old lady. Wow. And it's very, so I do a lot of talk, uh, uh, many, many talks about the beauty of florals and rose and jasmine and gardenia and they are sophisticated and they are beautiful ingredients. And, you know, young people today, um, truly, I, I think they're into the, well, what I'll say is that Americans love fresh and clean and so many different cultures have different preferences. So if you think about America, we, you know, everybody's showering a million times a day and you're deodorizing and you're after shampooing and so on and so forth. And so <laughs> the fresh and clean category is very, very indicative of American culture and society. Um, South Americans love spicy notes. Europeans love florals. The English love lavender. The, Europe, the Middle East people love oud and incense. So it's very interesting to see how cultures also have their own preferences. Mm -hmm. And I talk a lot about how uh, fragrance has no gender. You know, you men can wear perfumes and men can love florals and mm -hmm. women can love woodsy and spicy and herbaceous notes because perfumes are genderless mm -hmm. it's just how they make you feel it, they're really wonderful so true and and christian i wanted to dig a little deeper into the mermaid culture and i wanted to ask you if you could share with everyone um, how to become a mermaid? Uh, how do they reach out? Could, do, do you give lessons? Uh, <laughs> do, do, do you teach cu the culture of being a mermaid? All of that stuff. How can they contact you and get more information? 
Well, um, I think anyone can be a mermaid. I think everyone has a little, is a little, has a, is a mermaid at heart. And the nice thing about um, loving mermaids, it doesn't matter what gender you are. When I have my festival, I have people come from all over the world. I have couples come, parents come, grandparents, dads and their daughters, just something that makes people happy. You know, we grew up and we realized that a lot of things that we believe in um, aren't really true. Um, so mermaids are one of those things that you can always kind of think, well, what if they are? What if they did exist? So it's a nice fantasy to still think about. As far as um, working with me, you can contact me. I'm Mermaid Christiane on Instagram. I'm Christiane, and that's with a K, K-R-I-S-T-I, then a space and A-N-N on Facebook. And then come November 1st, I'll have my website, it's um, being built right now and it's Mermaid Christian. It'll have all the things that I do, which will be exciting. And you can contact me. I do lessons. I actually um, work at resorts. I do um, I special speak events, at colleges. Right? Yes, I speak at colleges and uh, do all kinds of things. Um, I've um, even done commercials with Virgin Voyages. I do a little bit of everything. It all depends. You never know what you're going to get. Uh, today, I had a phone call by the Associated Press to ask me about the storm that's going on today. So I was interviewed by, um, yeah, the, uh, the Associated Press News, uh, AP News. And um, so I never know what's going to happen. Uh, come November, I'll be broadcasting live for uh, a very big company x insurance for the power boats and uh, they're big all over the united states so i just never know what i'm going to get in my mermaid world and it's and it's really exciting um and uh i feel like i i, I wanted to say something about what sue was talking about last but i had a mermaid shiny moment and lost my train of thought. oh well it will come back but i did yeah. want to ask you how is king neptune you know we had oh! Oh, Jeffrey, yes, King Neptune. Well, that's his human name. He's doing lovely. He's um, actually purchased a home on one of the islands here, a Sunset Key. So he's here part time here in Ohio. And he was King Neptune again. And uh, he and I are, are great friends. And, and uh, he's engaged to be married to a, a, a lovely, lovely human that I'm trying to transform into an underwater goddess. So sooner or later, that will happen. Absolutely. I know it will. And uh, Christiane, um, when is the next Key West Mermaid Festival? Well, it's always July 4th weekend. And normally, depending on the dates, it's the 1st to the 5th. But I try to keep it the weekend of 4th of July. It's one of my favorite times of year. It's one of my favorite holidays. And it's one of the times where all the children in the United States and Europe are on vacation. So I try to gear it around the New York children, the kids in the United States, and the kids, the European children. So they come from all over, and they're able to enjoy it. And it's really fun. We have mermaids that come from all over the country. We've made international news all three times. Um, I'm being, um, I'm in a documentary now about it. It's not done, but uh, it'll be hopefully um, the gentleman that's putting it together works for PBS. So we'll see what happens and uh, see if it gets picked up by networks or whatnot. Not a reality show. I do not want to be on a reality show, a documentary or sitcom. Yes. But uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. I think um, what the mermaid movement is doing all over the world to raise the vibration on the planet, bring awareness to, um, you know, I love what you said, Sue, about, um, you know, being eco-friendly and, um, you know, sustainable back. it's uh, yeah, so important because i mean i wish more people thought like you it's imperative and and uh and we just need to educate everyone on that so that's wonderful and i applaud you well thank you I, i'm interested how did you why did you become a mermaid what what how did you get started in that well i i learned to swim before i can walk or talk and i come from a long line of commercial fishermen my family are are latin they're cuban and um they were commercial fishermen and my my it was the oldest and first born and i think my father thought he was going to have a son and he didn't so he would take me on all his adventures and i learned to dive with scuba tanks at four years old i tell it all the time in interviews or podcasts i think that's child abuse today but back then it was okay yeah. And um, they used to say, look, there's a mermaid out there. And so I always had a fascination with the ocean. 
and mermaids. And it was just something that never really went away. And I, I feel that, um, you know, we have connections to, I, I do believe in past lives and connections to past lives and, and uh, other star people, uh, if you will. And I feel that I have some kind of, of link to something aquatic or maybe Atlantis. Who knows? I don't know. I'm still learning here on Earth School, but it's it's a fun journey so far. Well, can I just tell you that one yes, of the yes. most beautiful, incredible, most expensive ingredients comes from the ocean. I believe and it. it comes it comes from the sperm whale. Mm. And when the sperm whale, that's the male whale, swallows cuttlefish, the bones from the cuttlefish irritate his stomach lining. So what does he do? He regurgitates and the sweet, sticky substance washes up on the shore. Now, perfumers have been interested in looking for ingredients everywhere, the forests, the oceans, the cities all over. And the story is, and it's true, that the fishermen would walk, go on the beaches and they would see this sweet, sticky stuff washing up on the shore. And they realized through research that it came from the sperm whale. Well, they would then take this, this ambergris or ambergris or ambergris, and they would have to extract it. And the oils that would be yielded would be the most expensive ingredients. They almost call it the, you know, the, the, the black oil, uh, the version of oil from the sea, uh, because it's so expensive. If you Google ambergris, you'll see that about a month and a half ago, Chinese fishermen were on the beach and they actually came across this big mound of ambergris that had washed up on the shore. They were able to sell it for a million dollars. It's so expensive. So I believe there's it. definitely um, a story there about natural ingredients coming from the ocean and coming from the forests and the cities and so on and so forth. There's a huge link. I mean, we have um, on the earth, which is a crystalline grid. And uh, one of the things that we can't be without are actually whales and dolphins because of the sonar. So um, it's they're precious and they're precious to us in our survival. So it, it's no surprise. I didn't know that, but that's fascinating. And there's it's no surprise that is one of the expensive ingredients because it is priceless. And it's got this very sweet, sensual, it's a beautiful, sensual, sweet kind of aroma. It's like a sweet, spicy aroma. We call it amber, short for ambergris. Nice. Amazing. You know, thank you so much, Sue. Wow. You're incredible. And you know what? I have to say, Sue, you're like, you're like a chemist. <laughs> yeah, she's an alchemist. She's like, you know what she's like? She's like um, temperance, you know, like temperance, you know, it's a little hot, a little cold. It's like a Goldilocks. <laughs> This is a little hollow, just right. Okay, I know. Well, I, I, I tell everybody, especially when I try and help people who've lost their sense of smell, that I'm not a scientist and I'm not a chemist and I'm not a real perfumer. If you're a real perfumer, you have to study organic chemistry and really understand the, the scientific aspect of which ingredients go together. But perfumery is both an art and a science. And I'm definitely on the artistic side, but I work with chemists and I work with, with perfumers, but I've learned so much over the years that in a way, you know, they call me a perfumer, but I'm really not a true perfumer. I am a perfume designer and I've now become a fragrance expert, so to speak, but um, I'm passionate about it and I love it. I love that you love it. And and I want to ask, I've, there's this question I want to ask about and I hope Paul, you and Christiane both find this interesting. Um, king Charles III has just been um, uh, our king now in from the United Kingdom. Um, and he will be anointed with a special secret tradition oil that includes uh, the chemist. Uh, it was, um, I I'm sorry, please forgive me. The Archbishop will uh, of Canterbury will dab his head with this. It's a secret oil and it marks the religious spiritual leader for the nation and head of the Church of England, the Queen's Pharmacy, Squire and Sons. It's a 1952 recipe, sesame oil, olive oil, perfumed with roses, orange flowers, jasmine, cinnamon, flowers of bezoin, musk, 
civet and ambergris. Right. Why is this so important as a tradition? That was very Egyptian. <laughs> well, the an actual fact that that current batch of oil, believe it or not, was also formulated using the same recipe of that which was which uh, that which crowned King Charles the first in 1626, and after the oil used for her father, King George the um, the second, and um, believe King George the sixth. So these fragrances, you know, when when a king or a queen is anointed, it, it's really sort of calling to God. And um, they had to come up with these really beautiful oils from the most exquisite ingredients. And what you just mentioned, the sesame and olive oil perfumed with roses and orange flowers and jasmine and cinnamon and flowers of benzoin and, and musk and civet and ambergris. Um, this is the same formula that was used for her. And they say that several bottles have been made up. Um, but the first monarch that was ever anointed was said to have been done back in the time of 973 at the time of King Edgar. So anointing oils, you know, well, didn't in the three, the, the three, um, the, the, at the time of Jesus, the three kings, they had anointing oil. So fragrances have been used in religious ceremonies and for kings and queens and, and nobility, uh, mostly kings and queens and royalty uh, for centuries. And so this particular oil that his mother, Queen Elizabeth had, was the secret recipe that she was coronated and anointed in 1952. And bottles have been kept for King Charles III. And I'm sure William, when he becomes king, will also have from that secret batch of, of oils will be anointed. Incredible. So should Christiane, Paul, and I be using oils as well? So the difference between oils and perfume are, this, are, are such. So oils, if you know what oil, olive oil, the consistency of olive oil, it's thick, it's occlusive, it sort of stays on your hand and it won't, it won't diffuse. Perfumes are made up of essential oils, plus the diluents, things that dilute the oils, such as alcohol, denatured alcohol, and water, and these different diluents to make fragrance lift up. So when you spray a fragrance, um, and you have this fragrance, and I spray it like this, I immediately smell it, it's beautiful. If I were to just put it on my, on my layer it on the hand it you really have to go very close up because it doesn't diffuse it doesn't lift up and the beauty about fragrance sort of mixing with your body chemistry and enhancing your body chemistry is that uh, when you have the pulse points and that's why fragrance is supposed to be worn at the pulse points and that's those are the warmest part of the body and that's why when you go to the doctor they take the pulse points why that's where you can actually feel the pulsating of the heartbeat. And because it pulsates, it's the warmest part of the body. So they say wear fragrance at the pulse points behind the nape of the neck, over here. I tell a whole story, by the way, about where you should, do you want to hear it? Yeah. <laughs> I think I know where this is going, yeah. but uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I, used to, I used to go to Paris very often on business and the, and the perfumer said, oh, you Americans, you have no idea how to wear the perfume. We in France, we've been wearing perfumes for centuries. We know that the fragrance rises as the body heat warms the fragrance because hot air rises. Mm -hmm. So you apply the fragrance from the bottom up at the ankles. So when you wear the long swishing skirts, the fragrance rises. So at the ankles, behind the knees, in between the thighs, in the bosom area, at all the pulse points and wherever you want to be kissed. She said, what does the Americans do? A spritz here and a spritz here. And who do they attract? The birds and the clouds. <laughs> That's so funny. That's great. That's a great story, Sue. So, you know, the idea is that perfume really gives you that beautiful feeling of the fragrances enveloping you. 
Whereas an oil will just sit on the skin and it won't really diffuse. Amazing. But a lot of people like oils, so it's okay. It, it's both is okay, right? So, yes. so Christiane, what do you think about, do you use oils do, or do you like perfume or, or both? You know, I like oils in a diffuser for my home. But on myself, I prefer perfume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And Paul, how about lovely. I thought I thought I was being fancy by uh, doing the walkthrough where you squirt it into the air and walk through it. But now it's going to be more work. I'm going to okay. to start at my ankles and work my way up. <laughs> so I would honestly say that, you know, if you're paying 150, 200 or 300 or 500 dollars for a bottle of fragrance, you really don't want it to spray it in the air. So first of all, so um, perfume really should be used on clean, unscented, moisturized skin. So what do I mean by that? If you go into the shower or the bath, try and, and, you go, and you love fragrance, you want your fragrance to last longer. So by using a scented soap or a scented lotion and then a scented gel and a shampoo and a scented deodorant, you're going to have all these conflicting aromas. And then your beautiful perfume, a spray here and a spray here, is going to be overpowered by all those conflicting scents. So try and get an unscented moisturized uh, soap or a lotion. There are plenty of them. And then that will give your the body a feeling of being a canvas and then you can spray your fragrance and so your fragrance will be pure on your beautiful unscented moisturized skin so that the fragrance will last because a lot of times people tell me all the time now and I know it for, for a fact that fragrance doesn't last as long as it used to why because certain ingredients have now been either designated as allergens from the European Union. So certain fragrances that used to be very robust and used to be deep and, and base notes that had a, a, a sort of veracity to them that, that they've been uh, banned by the EU. And I will say, well, peanuts are still around and peanuts give people anaphylactic shock and peanuts mm -hmm. have been a problem for some mm -hmm. people, but they still sell peanuts. So why are they, banning these beautiful ingredients so it's just um i don't know um but then the idea is to really enjoy the fragrance um that is not going to be over di diluted or overcome by mm -hmm. some of these other harsh chemical um commercial fragrance it really is a ritual sue from what you're saying and and an adornment if you will as well to take care of our bodies um and i love what you said and and i wanted to switch over a little bit to christiane and ask her a little bit about her show her week is it a weekly show can you tell us more a little bit about that christiane i'm actually on monday tuesdays and wednesdays um again my show is called triple aqua and everyone can stream live. It's um, four to seven Eastern Standard Time, and it is thekeyspartystation.com. I have, like I said, listeners all over the world, so that's really fun. And I like to talk about healthy mind, body, and soul. I like to talk about how to perfect and uh, use that muscle of intuition. I'm a cosmic mermaid, so I talk about things that are happening in the cosmos. Um, like just several days ago, Jupiter was the closest that had been to the earth in 59 years. So those are the things I talk about and a lot of, um, really amazing astrological alignments that are having now. Now I'm not an astrologer, but, um, it's a hobby and I love it. And I feel that I get a lot of it from my Akash, from my ancient, um, bloodline. And I just know these things like you are. I know you say you are not a um, a chemist, but I believe in one life you were, and uh, yeah, so be, yes. or at least one of your ancestors was, and it's yeah. it's passed down because it is so nat it seems so natural to you, um, and like AJ, you're just a natural, um, you know. If anything, you have um, telekinesis, where you're able to bring people together energetically. Maybe you can't move objects but you move energies together and uh, Paul I don't know you that well but uh yeah I think you have the gift of being funny is what I think <laughs> <laughs> that's it 
Come on. I love that. <laughs> jump in, jump in, Paul. What do you want to yeah, Paul. No, you're, you're 100% right. And I feel like even AJ's doing almost uh, the same work as Sue, as in, you know, something like this. We've mixed different ingredients, you know, mm -hmm. people from different walks of life that somehow have come together perfectly. So, yes. uh, AJ, uh, great job on, on being this podcasting <laughs> chemist that brought together but you're 100 percent right with with me I, i'm also somewhat of a connector i'd love bringing people together uh my first love i mean i, I go back and forth because i started in business first so i love the whole entrepreneurship i don't think we called it that back then back in the 1900s when i first got into it but um you know different types of businesses and then now with my love of acting as well and mostly comedy I mostly do sketch. I'm an improviser. I studied improv comedy. So that is my, you know, that. And then now, you know, content creator, creating content for my Instagram. I mean, I just had a video uh, a month ago, a little bit less than a month ago, hit, tw I couldn't believe it, 12.3 million views, which wow. is, you know, insane, insane. So, but but really, I think my strong suit is, is comedy. I hope so. I hate to say it and put myself on the spot, but uh, that is... My one of my first loves and true loves, you know, satire and parody, and and comedy and all that. So thank you. Okay, so I'll say so. Also, That's Paul. So Paul has mm -hmm. his own podcast, and he. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, I'm sure he'd love to interview you, lovely ladies, as well, because you're so. You, there's so many beautiful things about you that um are uh, that we haven't even scratched the surface here but we do have to start wrapping it up but and i'm going to ask each of us for our heart messages for this week but it's just been so wonderful to talk with you meet with you see you and reconnect christiane thank you so much yes and, thank you aj and sue you also you're an amazing alchemist just like <laughs> Anne said and Paul, thank you for your wonderful comments and 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 great sense of humor. Anything else you wanted to say, Paul? No, th thank you. I, I mean, my heart message or, or final thoughts would be that uh, for some reason, something's popping into my head, which is, you know, there are no strangers, just friends we haven't met. And I think like today perfectly encapsulates that where uh, I've, I've met two wonderful people that I, I hope we can continue to interact. And I would love to have you guys on my podcast Paul Vato presents uh it it is um uh it's a celebrity centric podcast so I think we're all so you know I'll have a celebrity mermaid and the celebrity <laughs> perfume maker uh and of course if anyone wants to uh reach out I'm at paulvato.com all of my social links are there and my book is now in the Amazon store it's, a, it's called <laughs> the Kama Susia. Which, uh, means, Thomas, uh, yeah. which means the filthy bed uh so it is uh, it's not for everybody uh but uh if it's if you go to vato.tv you can pick up a copy on amazon and it's on sale 5.99 and i wow. couldn't believe i ordered it and 24 hours later it was printed and at my door it's insane no what wonder is it is killing everyone. what's it about what is it about <laughs> i i'd rather not say uh, <laughs> It is. It's a dirty sex guy, basically. So, sorry to promote it on on, on this show. I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll wait. I'll just. Um, King news. He says it all. I don't think. I, I guess I hadn't told you, had I, AJ? I'm sorry. Sorry. Surprise! To surprise! And if you want cigars, uh, Vato cigars. So thank you. Wow. <laughs> you read the book, you can smoke a good cigar. Well, I, I, you know, and, and just talking about perfumes and things like that and, and the olfactory senses and bringing back memories. I mean, ever, I've, ever, I've never met anyone that doesn't like the smell of tobacco you know, before mm. it's lit, before it's combusted. Yes, I, um, I mean, men, women, uh, and then some, I mean, even when it's when it is lit, you know, it can be pretty accurate and, and offensive to some people. But even then, they're like, I don't like the smoke of cigars, but it reminds me of my grandfather. But exactly. tobacco that's been cured, that's not hasn't been set on fire, has such a great smell. And literally, men, women, they're like, oh my god, it brings back yeah. such memories. Right. So there is, uh, yeah, there is something there with with connection to our ancestors and grandparents and, and things like that yes. but um yeah so thank you for making me a part of this this is wonderful <laughs> thank you i've enjoyed it so much you humans are amazing 
<laughs> I've enjoyed it so much too. And I'm also a, a fellow actress. I, I love acting and I was an actress before I got into the freelance industry. And now I act at night too on Zoom, believe it or not. I'm part of a group. Oh, and just definitely. before I came on this one, I was every Tuesday night I'm on pages. So um, it's a fun thing to do. And it's from 6.30 until 10 at night. So on a Tuesday night. So I get my acting and my my creative juices going with my fragrances. So I love it. Amazing. So, amazing. Um, that Business is and acting. I love it. Incredible. I love it. And Christiane, do you have a heart message that you wanted to share with everybody, the world? You know, I do. I, and I say this to children. I say this to adults, source, God, universe, whatever it is to you, as long as, you know, I hope it's benevolent, puts a dream on your heart and only on your heart. And it, it might seem crazy to the rest of the world, your family, or just uh, your peers, your coworkers, but it doesn't matter. It's really not meant for them. So always keep swimming towards your dreams. Oh, you are such a beautiful sea. That's so gorgeous. That's beautiful. Yes, we love you, Christy Ann. Love you guys. Mermaste. And Namaste. You're, you're the Mermaste. Best. You really I, I, I would just say that I hope people think about how important their sense of smell is because, you know, from the second we're born, we, we smell our mothers, we connect to our mothers, and we go through life not even thinking about it, but taking it for granted. And when it's lost, it's devastating. So I urge everybody to really stop and smell the roses oh and enjoy your beautiful sense of smell because without it, life can be really very devastating. So please honor what God gave us. And it's, it's a beautiful way to enjoy life. Beautiful, beautiful message. Thank you so much. Thank you, AJ. Lovely to meet you and Paul and Christiane. This has been fantastic. Thank you so, so much. And I'd love to see you all again in, in person and in reality and on your shows. Yes, absolutely. I love, I would love that. And we'll see you also on Clubhouse, both of you. Hope yes. All three of you actually will all meet on Clubhouse, hopefully. And my heart message is follow Christiane the best celebrity mermaid on the planet and check out the Key West Mermaid Festival happening in June. Is that right? July. July. Fourth of July. July. Thank you. And red, white, and blue and mermaids too. <laughs> <laughs> this is so great. And I'll check out Christy Ann's radio show um and uh, enjoy that and follow her and also follow sue and center prizes check out her boutique in manhattan Ooh, how nice what a lovely trip you know treat yourself a little bit of bliss everybody needs a little bit of bliss and um contact christiane and sue phillips for some wonderful self-improvement and, and and bliss and enjoyment in life that's what it's all about also follow paul Thanks for subscribing and uh, see you next time. And until we meet again, much love. Thank you so much. Lots of love. Appreciate it. Good